Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how you can paint this little cat. So here's our reference picture that I printed out, the palettes that I used, one of them is handmade, one of them I found at a local store, and two different kinds of pencils. First I used a very soft pencil, then I taped the reference picture to the sketchbook and then I used a harder pencil and you can see that I pushed on it very hard and traced our cat like that. So that way we have a starting point now and then I did an underpainting and I just made sure that it was not too opaque. I'm using gouache here. So I'm just making sure that I still see my sketch somehow. And then I looked very closely at the reference picture and I painted the lightest parts first. So this might feel a little bit counterintuitive, but it works really well since we have an underpainting, you can see it. So I have the reference picture here for you so you can really look at it and I very roughly just looked at where are the lightest tones in this picture. Where does the cat have white fur or lighter beige fur? Where are the light points? Everything but the eyes. I did those later on but with all of the fur I have most of the lighter parts. Then I did the mid-tones as you can see here. So I just decided to go with my own color scheme here. This is kind of an a purple tone, a very desaturated purple tone. You can go for a brown tone as well if you want it to be a little bit more natural. I wanted it to look a little bit more painterly. So this is my mid-tone. And again, here I'm using the reference picture, looking at it and making sure that I kind of cover everything somewhat. It's okay if the orange peaks, in, he, peaks through here and there because I mean, we did this underpainting. It's also just okay if it shows through. So now I have a darker color. I mixed in black straight out of the tube. And now I'm making sure that I'm starting with the darkest colors. So I like to do this when I do gouache paintings, start with either the midway tones or the lightest tones and then add in the darker tones because then you already have a rough outline of everything. It looks super creepy and super weird at this point though because of the eyes and the open mouth that's unfinished. So you really have to trust the process. This really was a trust the process kind of project. And even though I traced it onto the paper, it's not that easy and you kind of have to trust it. So if it does not look perfect right away, please do not give up. So you can see I colored the eyes. I looked at the other fur details that are darker, like on the forehead and around the cheeks. And I just made sure that I have the darkest tones here now as well. So we have the brightest tones, we have the mid tones and we have the darkest tones. But of course there are a lot more values to this so those are gonna appear as well. I also mixed a slightly darker tone than our mid tone to start to add in a little bit of dimension. Then I used a pink tone and colored in the tongue and a little bit of the nose. The nose has two different colors. So I made sure I only have that in the middle, but you could also make the whole nose pink if you want to. That really depends on the cat. So it depends on what kind of look you want there. So you can see I used a mid-tone around the pink. And uh, again, this is a slightly darker version than our first mid-tone. So this is kind of a very very dusty, desaturated purple tone that I used here. And in combination with the orange, it kind of already looks like brown. I didn't really want to mix a brown because I feel like it looks a lot more dynamic with these colors. And, and now instead of green, I used this teal color. Some of you might know this is my favorite color. So I went ahead and put it on the background. And again, with the underpainting of the orange that peeks through just a little bit it looks a little bit more green so you can go a little bit more blue here because if you don't make a completely opaque layer you will see the orange come through just a little bit at least so you can see that I covered the background here and I also even added in a little bit more of a blue tone 
And then I went ahead and used the same color for the eyes, just colored that in for now. And you can see here that I'm doing the tongue, looking where the shadows are here and just roughly mapping out the darkest tones. So all of this gets more dimension, the nose, the tongue, doesn't have to be perfect. I did not perfectly recreate the reference picture, but it's always good if you have one to look at it, especially if you're doing this kind of style that's not too stylized. But even if you are doing more of a stylized illustration, having a reference can go so far. So here you can see that I'm starting to give the eyes more detail, adding the pupils, adding a little bit of shadow to the eyes. I used a different kind kinds of darker tones for that and then I also added in the glimmer in the eyes and now it's already starting to look a little bit better and less creepy. I feel like the end result might still look a little bit weird. I've never painted a cat with an open mouth before, but I thought it looked so fun. So I wanted to try that. And it looks a little bit different than a classic cat painting where the mouth is closed. It looks like the cat is smiling for the picture and I love that. So you can see I'm adding in more and more details to the fur and I'm just doing these little lines in different colors. So I have darker tones, lighter tones. I just look at the reference picture again and again to make sure I somewhat copy it in a way. And you can see I also added in a slightly darker tone to the eyes at the top and at the bottom. And now I'm using a a lighter version, even lighter than our first color, to really get out those highlights and go over everything again. Because at first it was a little bit washed out and now I'm just making it pop. But if you used straight white out of the tube for the first step, that's okay too, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure your highlights look good at this point now. And I just went over that again. And especially with fur in different colors, you kind of have to go back and forth because otherwise it's gonna look weird. I wanted it also to have the, a little bit of a scruffy look. So I achieved that by adding a lot of lines basically. And then I also did a background. I just painted these rather simple leaves and branches. And I think it added a lot because it made it look a little bit more fun, more playful. And the cat was outdoors anyways. So I think this kind of pulls it together and it looks more illustrative this way because just a basic background just was not what I felt like and doing a realistic background wasn't it either. So here we are and you can see I'm doing different kinds of leaves and branches and different colors. I used three different colors. I started with this light green tone. Now I'm using this darker tone. And then in the end, I used a very, very light tone on top of everything else. So we have a little bit of variety here and I spread all of that out. In hindsight, I could have stopped with the foliage here at this point, but here I am adding in the lighter tone now as well with a little bit different leaves but it's okay it doesn't bother me too much it maybe adds a little bit more dimension even and then I just did a few finishing details again looking at the reference picture making sure that I somewhat copied what I can see here while still kind of making it my own. I don't know what to feel about this painting. In a way, it looks really fun. In a way, it looks a little bit creepy, but maybe that's a good thing. I have no idea. Um, yeah, let me know if you want to see more animal tutorials. I know this is very quick, so maybe I would do a course about animal paintings at one point if people are interested in it, of course. So let me know if you would like to see more animal tutorials and maybe even a course at one point. Now I'm just finishing it off, adding the whiskers and then we're pretty much done with this cat painting. 
I really hope that you like this video and also if you know German or understand it or want to learn it, check out my German account that I recently started. And otherwise, I hope you're having a nice day and I hope I can see you again next time. Goodbye.